What's going on, everyone? So, the Lakers and Rob Plink are still exploring the potential for a salary dump type trade. They are active in trying to find some type of move in which they can clear uh, salary, open up some roster spots, and potentially um, use that to free up the full taxpayer mid level and be able to bring in some maybe quality upgrades in regards to just helping the roster, right? All three of the player option guys in Jackson Hayes, Cam Reddish, as well as Christian Wood, all three decided to stick around. Now, Christian Wood, I don't mind him sticking around at all. I think he could have had a much better season last year for the Lakers. Obviously, he got hurt, but even in the time that he did play, I thought Darvin Ham utilized him terribly. He was one of the guys that I heavily spoke about, how just Darvin Ham just kept playing him out of position, operated him as if he was a 3 and D wing rather than a big guy that can occasionally step out and knock down the three ball. And it, I was hoping and hopeful that he was going to stick around, and he did, right? But a lot of people are like Jackson Hayes, Cam Reddish. These are the guys. And look, I know a lot of people are upset about the player options, but it's also kind of this like catch-22, right? It's like if they balled out and they were great, then he's probably the the bad guy for not giving them long term contracts right but because they weren't great it's like you know rob handicapped us so you know it is kind of this like lose lose situation but I, I definitely not a fan of like the vet minimum player options right because if they're good then they're probably not sticking around for a vet minimum <laughs> but if they're bad then they are and now you're stuck with them right so it's kind of one of those things where it's like you know, you can make the argument that you shouldn't even be looking to do that regardless, but you could also argue that that's the only reason those guys came for the price in which they did, particularly Christian Wood, because that was the, the hope is that he could opt out and get a bigger deal elsewhere. But I digress, right? Lakers want to free up the full taxpayer mid-level exception, so that way they can go and pursue a guy like a Gary Trent Jr. If the Lakers could get a Gary Trent Jr. for a taxpayer mid-level, that would be probably the best bargain of, of a player that they have gotten in a long time. I mean, they've gotten some pretty good bargains. Gary Trent Jr. is easily a 15 to $20 million a year guy, right? I mean, he was offered 15 plus million a year and turned it down. Now, a lot of people might wonder, like, well, why would he turn down 15 million a year to then go and play for, you know, the taxpayer middle level of 6 million? It's because he wants a bigger long-term deal, right? Like, you go to the Lakers... And you are a big part of that team and you're a big part of that role and you can actually be a factor. And if the Lakers are winning or even better, if they win a chip and you end up being a big part of that, well, guess what? You're getting paid. And that's the idea and that's the goal. I mean, even like a guy like Malik Monk got offered, I think it was like 10 million a year or something like that. It might've been eight, eight million a year. Um, and turn that down long term to go take a minimum with the Lakers to then go and end up getting what do you got like a 13 million dollar contract a year contract and then just sign this new one right where he's getting like 17 and a half million a year guys like Gary Trent are trying to do the same thing right if I go to a team you know or if I stick around with Toronto one I sign a long term deal now I'm stuck at that price so if I go to one of these other teams, I'm not going to get the media attention and the notoriety for me balling out that I would. He's also on a bit of a regression year, a little bit of a disappointer. But I think that that had more to do with Toronto than it did him individually. Uh, and, you know, you look at Gary Trent and it's like, man, he could be a real valuable piece, a legit two-way uh, player that the Lakers could really need, right? Slot in at two, slot in at three. And so if you can get him cheap and reasonable he gets to go to a brighter spotlight to potentially raise his value. It's a win-win for everybody, right? That is something that would be ideal for everybody. Now, also, you know, the problem with just like a salary dump trade is you have to give up assets, right? Because a lot of people are like, you know, why haven't the Lakers just done a salary dump trade? Why hasn't a salary dump trade actually happened yet, right? Lakers, give up some seconds, do what you got to do. Get, get it done, so that way you go get a Gary Trent, you go get maybe a potential Spencer Dinwiddie, uh, right? couple reasons. One, 
you can't stack vet minimum guys unless you're getting somebody in return. So the the workaround for that is you just you, you trade them to like one team like use Detroit, and they're technically two separate trades, right? It's really just one giant trade. It's probably even announced as one giant trade, but really it's two separate trades is probably how, like what the details will show. Or you go the route where, you know, you, you don't give up any of those extra assets and you go make a tr- like an actual trade and complete that in, in your pursuit, right? Like, can you do a trade for Jeremy Grant and get Portland to take on an extra $5 million or something, right? Or even if it's not Portland. All right, let's say you go and you can you do a Walker Kessler trade? All right, go trade for Walker Kessler. Get, will Utah take on you know an extra whatever eight million or something like that? So that way you could dump some guys, free up some roster spots. Now you're in shape to to get the taxpayer mid level. It's always a possibility, right? Like you know, obviously, again, if you can do it within the scope of a trade. If you could do it within the parameters of a trade rather than like, hey, we're just giving up assets just to give up assets, just to bring in a guy. If you can do and give up the same assets to then go and get a guy like, a, a, you know, a Jeremy Grant or, you know, a Zach Levine is another name that I've thrown out there as like, hey, you know, Chicago would probably take on some extra salary just to get off of Levine because they want to get off of Levine. Right, and D'Lo would be expiring, right? Like, there's several factors that you get into. It might even take a couple vet minimum guys. Team like Chicago, they know that they got to take on four or five guys if they're going to unload Zach Levine anyway. So, to me, it's like if that's what they're waiting for is like if what if, if a trade comes to the horizon, then we're in good shape, right? But if it doesn't, then we can always default. There's always going to be a team that has a couple, you know. 10 million in salary or whatever that we could just dump some of these guys on and and do the salary dump. The salary dump and the roster dump trade that's not going anywhere. That's going to be there. Cuz there's, there's going to be a handful of teams that aren't going to go in any of the aprons or anything. Right? So there's always going to be a team there that is going to be willing to to say, "All right, we get some free assets. We can take on some guys. So it's not this rush. It's not this necessity for the Lakers. Again, why do a salary dump trade just to do a salary dump trade, give up a couple extra seconds in a new CBA where second rounds in particular are more valuable than they've ever been because of the new rules with the second round picks. So, or how you can structure their contracts and stuff and how they can't count towards the gap, right? Like, so now you're in a position to where you, you, second round picks are more valuable than they've ever been. Lakers have a good history with the second round and drafting guys and stuff. So do you really want to give up assets, particularly for your future, that you don't have to give up if you can just pull off a move otherwise? Again, we definitely need a trade. We definitely need to bring in guys like a Gary Trent Jr. and a Spencer Dinwiddie. Perfect world, you, you work it out to where you can bring in both, right? These are two guys that legit, I think, could, and Spencer Dinwiddie's another guy that I think really kind of got the, the S end of the stick, right? I think he's another guy that absolutely could have had a much bigger impact on the Lakers, but again, played out of position. Darvin Ham utilized him as a 3 and D wing rather than a point guard. It's not a coincidence that the only game we won without D'Angelo Russell was when Spencer Dinwiddie played the D'Angelo Russell role, and Spencer Dinwiddie gave you the best game of his Laker tenure, right? Like, that's not a coincidence. It's because he finally played in position. And instead of Darvin Ham going, oh, hey, maybe we should let him do that more, what ended up happening? He ended up going right back to being a 3 and D Wayne, and they let Austin Reeves play the point card. <sighs> Hopefully, <laughs> under J.J. Redick, J.J. Redick does a better job of just slotting guys. Again, I'm not saying these guys can't ever do it, right? Rui, Spencer Dinwiddie, and uh, Christian Wood were the three guys that I highlighted and complained the most about. Rui, he's a four. Does that mean he that he can never play the three? No, right? Can you can you run times where he's you know even slotted at three, but like on offense he's playing slotted over at the four? Like, there's ways to do it. There's ways to work around it. Now, again, the, I'm not every coach 
in sequences plays guys technically out of position. You know, like, but again, it's about the, the type of offense it sets and where they are during those sequences and then how frequently and how much time do you do that? Like, I'm sure that there might be times where JJ has Rui slotted at the three, but I'm sure that there's going to be a purpose besides him just standing in the corner all game, getting ready to shoot a three. Like, again, more movement, more actions, right? Like, there's ways to kind of mitigate that when you have to. And so, to me, my hope is that Lakers can pull off a trade to which they don't have to do some, like, just blatant salary dump, and it's not like this thing where it's like, ah, oh, man, here we go. Like, I'm hoping it's like a Janine's where it's like, you're getting pieces, you're getting assets, you're getting players back. You know, it's not just a waste just to be a waste, is my hope. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion. Past question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? What are your thoughts? Um, do you like the idea of, you know, yeah, being patient, finding a trade, that actually gets you something in return rather than just losing assets? Um, or do you think, no, like, hey, just do a salary dump. Do whatever you got to do. Just get something done. Again, the salary dump trade isn't going anywhere, right? I mean, that's all. That's always going to be there because there's always going to be a team that is under the cap. So you'll be fine. But anyway, again, let me know how you feel down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me out. So we enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. Not subscribe to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.